Power to Survivors. Wow, that honestly never gets old, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. That never gets old. How is everyone doing? Oh my God, I've been up since, I mean, I'm always up early now that I'm a mom, but today was uh, extra, extra early because I went on to the Megyn Kelly show and that was, uh, Honestly, it was a very surreal experience because, you know, for so many reasons, obviously, but the world is really listening. And so many people are watching this documentary. And, you know, the more I hear from so many different individuals from all over the world, it's just, it's honestly surreal. But it was so early. I woke up and the sun was not up yet, and I was like, no! It was literally dark. We're at 70K? Wait, quiet, just show me we're over seven, we're at 70K! Oh my God, you all are amazing. Thank you so much, wow. Oh my God, this, this means so much to me. You all have no idea. I mean, I was saying this the other day, I'm like a broken record, but you know, this all started in the streets and to see where we are now is pinch me, am I dreaming? I just really can't believe this to be true. I'm scared that I'm gonna wake up one day and be like, that was just, uh, just a dream. But thank you all so much for being here. You all are amazing. Welcome new members, welcome new members. Oh, and for the new members that are picking the tier, the dinner party and up, this Friday, we're gonna be watching Open Secret together, which is going to be pretty wild. I haven't seen it since, I don't know, I think 2019. So it's gonna be a lot different watching it now with everything that I've learned and know. And also I've learned that there are some weird, behind the scenes people when it comes to Open Secret. And so we're gonna do a little bit of a deep dive when it comes to that documentary. And I'm sure that maybe some people heard, you know, even, well, I'm not gonna give it away, but I do know that there has been a survivor that was not treated well when it came to the Open Secret documentary where they were pressured in a way and that they got told that they are pretty much the problem with the industry for not coming forward. And, you know, it's really horrible to hear that because, you know, survivors everywhere deserve, first of all, peace. They deserve to come forward when they choose to. And when you see a documentary that's supposed to be exposing, you know, uh, what it said it was exposing, but then also behind the scenes, not being kind with the survivors that they were asking to participate in the documentary. It's always just, eh. And that wasn't my personal experience when it came to Quiet On Set. They never said anything like that to me. And I guess now you can see why, you know, so many different individuals sat down to tell their story. And I really do believe it's because they did not do something like that, right? No survivor wants to be told that they are the problem. It's kind of wild to, to hear something like that because, you know, that's victim blaming 101, to be quite honest with you. And so Friday for all members dinner partying up, we're going to watch it together. I'll, I think I'm going to be here, actually. I don't think I'm going to be able to be at home. Um, and I'm like, I'm like now telling quiet while I'm here. I'm like, quiet, I'm, I'm going to be uh, sneaking into the, to the studio. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so Friday, we're going to be watching it together and, you know, we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive on who's behind it, but how is everyone doing? How is everyone feeling? It is Wednesday, March 27th. I feel like this year it's kind of flying by already. It's super hot here in, in the studio <laughs> this morning. It was freezing and then now it's super hot in here, 
What did someone say here? Happy early birthday, Alexa. So grateful for your podcast. It helps me learn and deal with what I went through. So thank you and all the love, hugs, and kisses. Thank you so much, Dark Shadow. Uh, it's an honor to be here, honestly. And the whole reason why I honestly started the show was because I was having a hard time finding content that was survivor-led and survivor-centric. I'm sure a lot of people out here know Adam McIntyre, and that was honestly the only person that I could find. Adam's amazing. And that was the only person I could find on YouTube. And so it's really important to have survivors, you know, leading these conversations because not only are they informed, but also I really do believe that they are some type of expert when it comes to these uh, stories just because they're coming from, sadly, an experienced place. And, you know, it's, oh, oh, Taylor, hello, Alexa, love you. Thank you so much for being here. You guys are so sweet. These are like little birthday presents. <laughs> These are like little birthday presents. Thank you so, so much. You know, now that I have kids, I don't even think about really honestly myself anymore. Like, even my birthday, I'm probably going to just end up getting things for my kids. It's so weird when that happens. Like, I literally am not even thinking about myself anymore. But, yeah, so I started this platform because I wanted to see it. And it's been, it's been a crawl, and it's been a climb. But now we are here, and it, it's shocking to see how many people are listening and caring. And not only survivors supporting, but also allies and I really do want to remind everyone out there, survivors need more allies. We really can't do this alone. This is a community effort. Hi, Josh. The exploitation of child stars in Hollywood is driven by profit as well to hide. All the blank behavior behind the scenes. Very true, Josh. Hello, I love your podcast and I respect what you do so much. You are the voice for so many survivors, including myself, Illy Trentico. Thank you so much. Well, you know what? I'm trying my best. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to show up. And sometimes that's the, that's the best you can do. You know, rain or shine, I just try to show up and uh, even when it gets really hard. And trust me, this hasn't been an easy journey. And so I am beyond grateful for everyone here. So, oh my God, we have so much. <gasps> oh, gifted one. Oh my God, thank you so much, Sean. Wait, someone gifted 10. I don't even see that yet. Oh, someone gifted 10. Oh, I see it all the way at the top. Thank you so much. Now it's everyone's birthday. It's everyone's birthday. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Wait, who was it that that gave it? Oh, it's Stephanie. Stephanie, thank you so much for doing that. That's so sweet. And also, I do want to tell everyone that we're going to start beginning once again, uh, Social Change Now, which is basically this workbook that a lot of the community and I have been working through for quite some time where we all participate in finding our own unique voices when it comes to social change. And that's for all members. And so that's gonna start up again after this coming Friday. And it's one of my favorite things about you know the show and just the platform and just the community is figuring out how we can all participate because not everyone shows up in the same way and that's okay. That's actually what makes, I think, social justice movements beautiful, is how each person has their own unique voice and their own unique way in showing up. And so we're gonna get back to that after this Friday, and so I do wanna let everyone know that's for all members. I want everyone to be a part of that because it matters, and there are so many ways to show up, and you matter, your voice matters, and we need all the allies, and so I'm really, really, really looking, really looking forward to that. So. Thank you all so much. God, we have a lot to go through. So I don't know how many of you have watched my previous videos about Dan Schneider and this individual by the name of John Vaccaro. I didn't even know who John Vaccaro was Good until- evening, And welcome to Vaccaro. <laughs> Oh yeah, wait, I forgot this. Actually, some of you might know who John Vaccaro is because in Zoe 101, there is an episode in a season after I left the show where there's like an Italian restaurant by the name of Vaccaro. Well, that was most likely named after John Vaccaro, who, 
Welcome to Chef's Kiss, Nori. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Dan Schneider's best friend, in my opinion. I mean, they're very close friends. They've been friends since, honestly, the beginning. And I had no idea who he was. No, never met him on set. Never even heard about him while I was working at Nickelodeon. Did not know the guy. And, you know, fast forward, we all know, stalker, restraining order happened. And I realized that this man by the name of John Vaccaro was following all of my, you know, stalker's accounts. And not only the stalker's accounts, but also a smear campaign Twitter account that he created. And, you know, it was pretty shocking to see that because this was before I even told the world out of public safety who my stalker was. And so I'm like, wait a minute, how does John Vaccaro, Dan Schneider's good friend, have any connection to my stalker? And he's a random person, right? And so I find him, you know, following my stalker. I click on his uh, Twitter account. I go to it and it says, follow back. And I'm like, follow back? Who, who is this? Why is he following me? And I scroll down and I see all of these posts about Dan Schneider. My good friend, Dan Schneider. My good friend, Dan Schneider, this, that. And I'm looking at it and I'm going, why would Dan Schneider's good friend follow me, follow my stalker's pages, and this smear campaign Twitter account? Just sitting there like my jaw, you have no idea. I'm texting my husband. My husband was at work. I'm going, and what is going on? You know, it was pretty shocking to see that. And so I realized that John Vaccaro was also following Eat Predators. And, you know, this is somebody who I don't know. And this all happened after I first protested Nickelodeon. And this is like one of the, sadly, this is, can happen when you start being on the front lines of these issues is, Let's be honest, I don't think Nickelodeon likes me that much. I definitely don't think Dan Schneider likes me whatsoever. And, you know, these are just some questions I'm raising. I'm not saying these as, as absolutes, but it is kind of strange that, you know, I didn't meet my stalker until after I first protested Nickelodeon. And then fast forward, there is some type of connection with Dan Schneider, John Vaccaro, and him. You know what I mean? And so I think anybody would feel a little bit strange about that. And so as I start digging into who John Vaccaro is, I go into his LinkedIn account. And so actually let's, let's share my screen so we can show everyone who John Vaccaro is and what is on his LinkedIn page. Good evening and welcome to Vaccaro. <laughs> <laughs> that actually, that really made me laugh. Okay, so here is John Vaccaro. Everyone, this is what he looks like. This is who he is. This is his LinkedIn page. And so imagine you're me, right? And you're you're finding out, you know, who John Vaccaro is. You go to his LinkedIn. You're you're trying to figure it out. I scroll down and I'm like, okay, juicy orange, which we'll get into, is his current place that he works. I'm like, okay, Condé Nast, okay, Lexus Nexus, okay, Showtime. I'm like, okay, show me all eight experiences. I wanna see them all. So I scroll down and look at what we have here. Look at what we have here. Let's zoom in a little bit. Look at where John Vaccaro worked. He worked at Nickelodeon. And where, what, what was his uh, job description when he was working at Nickelodeon? Well, he was the director. He ran the content and business operations of Nickelodeon Online. I'm like, Nickelodeon Online? Interesting. And then underneath it, it says after he left Nickelodeon, he ended up working for Viacom, which by the way, just a reminder for everyone out there, Nickelodeon is owned by Viacom. 
And so you're like, okay, so he was creating the content. And what's weird about it, to be honest, here's a kid's job, right? I mean, a job that's for kids. And then above here, he, le I mean, I don't know if he left or he got let go. I'm, I'm not really sure, obviously, but he moves on to teen people. And you're like, what? I'm sorry, like, a again, a grown man, you know, leaving from one kid's position, honestly, you know, work position into Teen People magazine online. I'm like, okay. But then obviously my, my little red flag started going off because we all remember the slap. We, we all remember, you know, Dan's Warp. We remember Dan Schneider's websites. We remember, you know, all of that. And as I started to dig into, you know, John Vaccaro, I realized that he also created Dan Schneider's website. So maybe Dan Schneider and John Vaccaro met while they were working at Nickelodeon. And then Dan Schneider ends up hiring him to make his websites. But the weird part about it is John Vaccaro has a very specific type of web design. It's very, I don't know, once you see it, you can't unsee it. And even after he left Nickelodeon, you would see his web design kind of show up throughout a lot of Dan Schneider's TV shows when it came to the slap, when it came to, you know, kind of even Amanda Please, which we're going to get into, you know, all of his offsites off of Nickelodeon look very similar to John Vaccaro's design. How's the chat feeling about this? Because this goes kind of deep. This goes kind of deep. So... It says he left in 2000 and you know recently I reached out to John Vaccaro and I literally asked him why are you following me because he's still following my accounts and I'm not really sure why he's still following my accounts but he's still following my accounts I asked him why are you following me and he left me on red it's like, why are you following me if you're going to read my DM and then leave me on red? You're so weird. Like, John Vaccaro just gives me so many red flags. Sorry, not sorry, John, but you're, this is just bizarre. What are you doing in my life? You know what I mean? What are, are you spying for Dan Schneider? I mean, it's possible. Never, never, <laughs> never happened. So anyways, moving on, he now currently works for a company called Juicy Orange which is a web design, I, I, I'm guessing firm, where, where they make a bunch of websites. And one of them is, does anyone recognize this? Hungry Girl. Who is Hungry Girl? Kind of a strange name too, by the way. All of their stuff is just bizarre. You know, they don't really pick the normal titles. They don't pick the normal anything. It's always a little bit bizarre. So it looks like he did the web design for Hungry Girl. It looks like he also did web design for Ariana Grande, which is kind of interesting. He also has a photo on his Twitter, to be honest with you, with Ariana Grande's mother. So I'm like, who is this person? And that's pretty much it. So it's Dan Schneider. Hungry Girl, you know, worked for Nickelodeon. Moving on, this is what Hungry Girl's website looks like. So when you look at it at face value, you're like, it kind of looks like an old school, early 2000s website, which I think is John Vaccaro's, maybe he just never outgrew, like he never grew out of it. And so it's just been what he designs ever since the early 2000s. But you'll notice as we move through a lot of these Nickelodeon offsite websites, they're John Vaccaro's, design is very apparent but we cannot confirm nor deny right so i this is where it gets so freaking wild for me you guys so this wasn't even until last night somebody messages me and says did you know that dan schneider's wife was running the content for nickelodeon online and i'm like i'm sorry first of all if everyone wants to see Wait, wait, where is she? Where is she? Like, no, let's pull this up. By the way, her LinkedIn, what's with this? It's a very cute chimp. 
It's a very, very cute monkey, but what a weird LinkedIn photo. You know what I mean? It's just a little bit odd. Not what I expected for LinkedIn. Is it her monkey? Is it Dan's monkey? Is it John Vaccaro's monkey? Like whose monkey is this exactly? Um, but this is her LinkedIn photo. And when you look at her LinkedIn, you guys, I didn't even know this. Look. So it says from 1995 to March 2000, four years and five months, she was director of online content development. And when I looked at it, I went, wait, why does 2000 sound so familiar? Well, that's because if we remember, John Vaccaro also stopped working at Nickelodeon in 2000. And you're like, hmm, that's kind of a weird you know, coincidence. Why did he stop working for Nickelodeon in 2000? And then she stopped and it was both for online content. But you're like, okay. We'll get there, but just to give you a little bit of a spoiler, it seems like John Vaccaro might have been working as an independent contractor, you know, for these offsite websites and not necessarily on the payroll for Nickelodeon, but he might have been on the payroll for Schneider's Bakery or for Dan's Warp. You know what I mean? So that really blew, that blew my mind. The connection between Dan Schneider's wife and you know, John Vaccaro, both of them working for Nickelodeon, working for online content, that makes sense how they met each other. But also it makes a lot of sense why they are still very close. Because not only, you know, did they work in the past, they're working in the present day and also following e-predators and following all of my personal accounts, including my stalker, which I find very weird. So then I started digging into it. I was like, okay, no thanks, people. I started looking into it, and I'm like, how did Dan Schneider and his wife even meet one another? I didn't even know this until last night. So here's Dan Schneider's wife. Here's Dan Schneider. Ew, ew, ew. Uh, so one of Lillian's first jobs after graduating from the University of Albany was as a director of online content development at Nickelodeon from 1995 to 2000 per her LinkedIn. She served as an executive producer for Nick at Night before transitioning to the director of Convergence for the network in 1999. Schneider worked at the network at the same time as Lillian, creating shows like All That and The Amanda Show. I had no idea that Dan Schneider's wife met him while working at Nickelodeon. All of these people are connected to Nickelodeon, which is very bizarre to me personally. You know, everyone that surrounds Nickelodeon, I mean, surrounds Dan Schneider, including his own wife, has some type of connection to Nickelodeon, which just, I don't know, gives me a little bit of those um, spidey senses where you're going, something is just a little bit peculiar here. So we went back into the way, way back, what is it called? The way, way back machine, the way back machine. You, you would say my spidey senses are tingling. Yes, my spidey senses are tingling and boy, are they tingling. And I have to hold myself back from some of the things I wanna say because you know I'm still figuring some things out, BTS, behind the scenes. But this is very odd. You know, There's something very strange going on here, in my opinion. So let's look at what Dan Schneider's website looked like in, you know, 2016 from the Wayback Machine. So this is for sure designed by John Vaccaro. And what I find very odd about this website is, what do we think? The first thing that pops up is please enter your age, which, okay, I get they're trying to survey, you know, what's what kind of traffic is coming to the website are these children but when it comes to dan schneider that alone just kind of gives me the eh so i'm gonna put in 18 watch me get denied <laughs> that'd be so wild if i put in 18 and i just like got denied so this is dan schneider.com this is what his website looked like as you can see it shows you know, all of the shows that he has done. And 
The reason why I'm showing this is because we really need to learn what John Vaccaro's web design looks like. And so let's just remember, you know, kind of like these bubbly, you know, um, neon little like, I don't know, I don't know, what would you even call these? Like, click, I don't even know what to call this, honestly. But it's just the style of it, this bubbly style, this, Bubble like, little tabs. tab. Yeah, yeah like, yeah. tabs, exactly. Like bubble tabs or something. Bubble tabs. Is that what it's called? What is the chat thing? Is it bubble tabs? <laughs> what are these called? Um, but it has a very specific type of style. And so let's just remember this, you know, going into everything. First, we're going to watch a little bit of a clip of a recent YouTube video that just released by an individual named Quentin Reviews. And it was pretty interesting. And so shout out to Quentin Reviews. Uh, please head over to his YouTube channel, subscribe, you know, give him a shout out, leave a comment on specifically this video because it really blew my mind to be quite honest about how in debt like how embedded Dan Schneider's you know websites his personal Twitter etc was embedded into his Nickelodeon shows almost in a subliminal way it was almost like subliminal where you would just see in the background and some creators could say hey you know, Dan Schneider's creating a universe. Well, I'm just going to say, I don't like his universe, all right? The universe that he was creating is warped, for sure. And um, honestly, most of the time, disturbing. And so let's just watch a little bit of this clip. We're going to talk about it. And I'll, I'll definitely be answering some of the super chats a little bit after this YouTube. A wide range of projects that Dan Schneider took part in over his 32 years working on television. But when it comes to shows where Dan Schneider acted as a proper showrunner, he is most associated with nine programs. All that, The Amanda Show, Drake and Josh, Zoe 101, iCarly, Victoria, Sam and Cat, Henry so Danger, many. and Game Shakers. This represents well over two decades of children's content. With this comes the reality that a lot of children grew up with this man's productions and a lot of people still watch these shows to this very day yeah that's another point that he just made is that i'll even get children like children present day messaging me being like oh i just watched you know zoe 101 for the first time and i'm like what like they're still airing it so much that even you know generations after me you know these children are watching his shows for the first time and how dangerous is that like i said in my dan schneider reaction to his apology video whatever you know he's blocking evolution we do not want his archaic creepy mind you know being passed down to any future generations you know that's that's my opinion all right this is important because of the conversation of how intertwined Dan Schneider is with his writing. I'll be tackling my opinions on this later, but in short, a lot of people have actively avoided crediting Dan Schneider for projects that they think highly of. And I think what this does is erase the very explicit brand that Schneider had successfully built up over the 20 some odd years. He, he was definitely creating a brand, and also in my opinion, I feel like his him stepping out into the forefront publicly was to not only gain notoriety, but I also think he was getting people to visit his Twitter, getting people to visit his websites for his own personal whatever. Not really sure what it is, but not many creators want to be as notable publicly, visually, you know, as Dan Schneider especially when it comes to kids shows, you know, you don't really want kids messaging you, right? You don't really want to be in the world of, of children out there. You know, that's a little bit peculiar, but it seems like Dan Schneider throughout all of his shows really wanted kids to know who created it and where you could find him at the network. Now, in many ways, this was subtle and easy to miss when you were a kid. Even the most there innocent it is. stuff was All right, so do we recognize that website right there? So look at this. See this, how this little, there's, you know, how you just can't miss it. It's a very specific type of web design. It has a specific type of feel. And this was 
you you look at it and it looks like it's early 2000s maybe late 90s honestly website design and i think this was icarly so what this was 2006 possibly or is it a little bit later than that i'm wondering actually the chat will have to correct me when was icarly out i'm not really sure i'll wait for the chat but you can you can recognize this right this this in my opinion was definitely john vaccaro but here's a quick example of what I'm talking about. In iCarly Season 2 Episode 5, I Go to Japan, we are shown the iWeb Awards, and specifically, we see several contestants go on the stage while the gang are stuck with security. In the background of this shot, we see a woman representing the best online cooking show. Oh, As the gang run inside, we briefly see a clip. Who, 2007. See, 2007, but you see that web design? It looks like early, early 2000s. That's when you know it's John Vaccaro. That's when you know it's honestly Dan Schneider and John Vaccaro. Okay, 2007. Got it. Thank you. And look at who we look at who we have here. I've never watched iCarly or Victorious, but this kind of this is pretty bizarre. Look at who's in the background. Of this woman's segment. Hey, that's enough shaking. The onions are ready for action. If you listened closely there, you might have heard the specific stock audio file used whenever a special cameo happens in one of these shows. So who was this woman, and why was her cameo so important? Well, this is Lisa Lillian, the owner of the online brand- You know, I met her, obviously, a few times, and I just never... Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, okay? I didn't feel, you know, when you meet couples and you're like, that's a couple, you know, you're like, wow, you, you know, you so obviously love her, you know, you so obviously love him. I just never saw like a relationship with them. Like whenever I would see her on set, it, it just never felt that way. I remember even someone telling me like, oh, that's Dan's, you know, wife or, you know, and, and I remember being like, just so caught off guard from that because it just didn't feel like that, if that makes any sense. Hopefully people can understand what I'm saying here. The vibe was off. It just didn't, that's how I remember her. And she honestly didn't talk to me that much. Maybe my mom can say something in the chat if she has any vivid memories of her. But my memories were always just like, who are you? You know, like, you're the... Dan's wife, and he would never talk about her. So I never even heard her name. Unless she showed up on set or something, I never heard her name ever. And so, you know, that that was honestly my personal experience when it came to when it came to her. So let's continue. Hungry Girl. Here's Hungry Girl. John also a TV show in the early 2010s. And she is also Dan Schneider's wife. Dan Schneider is a wife guy who made a long running joke on all of his shows of depicting his wife as one of the most famous chefs in the world, <laughs> with her show being watched by Carrie. Wait, 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 did he just say Dan's a wife? What is it? A wife guy? A wife guy, yeah. A wait, that, guy. what does that even mean, Dan's a wife? Dan's a lot of things. Dan, and I guess now also including a, a wife guy, which I, is... I don't know what that actually means, but I. it made sense when he said it. It made sense, yeah, especially when he followed it up with his wife, I guess, is mentioned a lot in his warped world, universe, whatever. It seems like she is brought up multiple times. I'm trying to think if she was brought up in Zoe 101. If, if anyone has any clips of her mentioned in Zoe 101, please put it in the chat. I'm so curious characters in several different shows. In fact, when the iCarly opening sequence starts, have you ever noticed this weird stock art of a brunette woman in the oh. corner? As a kid, I always assumed this was supposed to be Carly, but it's not. That's Dan Schneider's wife. Specifically, it's Lisa's art Sona that she uses on her website and her cook. Ew, and you know what? Look over here. Wait, wait, check this out. This is kind of wild. See this stock art? Now look at Joe team. It's like these weird cartoon avatars, like obviously avatars, whatever, I don't know what you call them. They're they, avatars, right? They're so, I don't know. I don't know, you don't see them often. And when you do, you're kind of like, I don't know. No, I don't know if I'm necessarily <laughs> higher 
doing this uh, this team per se. You know what I mean? You're like, what? What am I looking at? What is this? Is this a video? Is this like some kind of online game? Like, what exactly is this? But once I saw that on hers, it really reminded me of John Vaccaro and his Juicy Orange new company that he is the co-founder of, by the way, and also builds the Hungry Girl website. But just kind of weird. And also, what's with them in websites? You know, this is what I'm starting to realize. There's some type of through line between his wife, John Vaccaro, Dan Schneider, and websites. And I think, where was it that I recently watched something where it said that Dan Schneider was a technology guy? Like, he loved technology. He liked websites. This was recently, and I'm trying to remember where I saw it. But there is something strange about these websites, and not only these websites, but the slap in particular, right? That was a offsite of Nickelodeon. And I think because of that, that is where the content really started to escalate because it became online. But there's just, just leaving little crumbs here. Like there, there's just something peculiar about how much online presence, you know, Dan Schneider wanted to have, including his wife and his connection with this person named John Vaccaro that just happens to be a web, a web designer. Lord of the Onion Rings. Bucks. Now, an annoying trend I've found when you point out any fact about Dan Schneider is that everyone tries to read it as sounding sinister. You know, you put creepy background music behind it, you make the image black and white, and you do an invert effect, and it's like, <laughs> oh, this is the most creepy thing. So I just want to be clear about this. There is nothing wrong with high- Wait, I love that he goes, there's nothing wrong, and there's just junk and stuff. You're like, uh, okay, but they're, they're, oh, there's his wife again. This is creepy. This is so weird. Oh, wait, there was a Zoe 101 message board. Really? If someone can find that, maybe add it into the Reddit. I'm so curious to see that. Dating your wife in the shows that you make. But I think it's a very interesting example of the many ways that Dan's presence is felt in these shows even if he wasn't one of the actors. So true. But that is, of course, ignoring that sometimes he whoa! is an actor. For instance, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. His keen ignoring that wait, sometimes what is this? he is no! an actor. For instance, he is not his playing like a car, motorcycle, something mechanic. That's not real. Wait, wait, wait. That's not, I gotta watch that again, you guys. That Ignoring that sometimes he is. <laughs> Sorry, that, that, that kind of broke my brain a little bit. Wow. Does he have ta Dan Schneider with tattoos? Uh, quiet, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Yeah, this I is. I, it's like I barely recognize him. <laughs> don't even recognize him at all what is this no way jump scare yeah you're not kidding total jump scare wait that was in the iCarly finale weird choice this is in his hair well wow, it's like a halloween costume <laughs> An actor. For instance, alongside his Keenan and Kel There's guest Dan. episode, he appears as Mr. Bailey in Good Burger, Mr. Oldman in The Amanda Show, True. as the taxi driver in the Zoe 101 semi finale Chasing Zoe, as the Secret Service agent. Wait, wait, wait. He was in the Zoe 101 finale as well. So, wait, he's in the iCarly. Oh, please stay away from um, Michelle Obama. <laughs> What what <laughs> that freeze frame freaked me out. I feel like you can literally pause Dan Schneider or any of his shows at any time and it just is weird. Am I the only one? Maybe I'm the only one. You know, it's so funny because people will go, "Well, you know, you you might be looking too deep into it." You're like, "No, no, no, no. It can't be that often that you pause content or that you look at someone's Twitter, or you look at someone's website, the list kind of goes on, and the weirdness just literally goes on and on and on. There's not many people that this happens to, other than Dan Schneider. I want to say, Alexa, I found your Halloween pick from when you were 16. Oh my God, you did? That's not, was I a nurse? I feel like, I, I think my memory of me at 16 in Hall during Halloween was me as a nurse. But not the co-founder of Juicy, he's a partner. Oh, right, he's a partner. That's right, sorry, sorry, John. 
you're a partner of Juicy Orange. So, wow, okay, I didn't even know that Dan Schneider was in all of these finales, but also something strange about, you know, Dan Schneider is how much he was involved, not only behind the scenes, but in front, you know? Well, we're going to see that in a second, but he really wanted to be noticed, and I wonder why, you know? I, I really wonder why after looking at his Twitter account. In the Michelle Obama iCarly episode, and in the iCarly finale, he cameos as the mechanic that Sam steals I can't get over from. That image. And in all that and the Amanda show, he constantly appeared in several other guest roles and occasionally as himself. To top this off, Schneider would do voice cameos in so many episodes of so many different shows that it is impossible. Which is weird because Brian Peck, you know, also voiceover in front of the camera, voiceover in front of the camera. You know, I think even Dan Schneider ended up replacing Brian Peck for the know your stars, know your stars, you know, that whole bit. I think Dan Schneider was the one who replaced Brian Peck. So correct me if I'm wrong to keep track of. His identifiable nasally yell can be heard in essentially every project he worked on from 1994 to 2018. It's the Pajeli Hucho! Okay, okay, you're the ninth caller, which means you've won two tickets and backstage passes to zero gravity. Welcome, yoga people. Namaste. We did That was not Dan Schneider saying namaste. We need that as a soundbite. That is ridiculous. Hearing Dan Schneider say namaste is almost, it, what the heck? Wait, what does it say? Uh, blah, 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 coattails. Did Dan take over the, no yeah, yeah, Dan did. Okay, so he did. Isn't that weird too? I'm sorry, but I just gotta say it. Like that's pretty weird. What an interesting replacement. <laughs> wouldn't want it any other way. Maximum dancing! Love me! He was also in Grand Theft Auto Vice City. But the most infamous example of the hidden references to Schneider are the subliminal ones. Yeah. Referencing Dan Warp. There! See the Dan- wait, did we see that? Wait, let, let's, let's pause it here. This- Referencing this is wild. Dan Warp. Dan Warp tweets. He's having one of the lead actors wear a shirt that says Dan Warp tweets. And boy, I think now the whole world has read a lot of what he was tweeting away over there. And it wasn't good. It wasn't good whatsoever. It was about children's feet constantly. It was about massaging his wife's feet. It was about Jeanette McCurdy's, you know, the, the, you guys get it. Like, it was his, why would you want any kid going over there? But then if you fast forward to what ended up being tweeted on Sam and Kat's own Twitter account, where they were asking kids to whatever, right? Was it Sam and Kat or something on the bottom of their feet? Stop. So weird. And hashtag, like, Sam and Kat whatever. That's where it also gets to a whole new layer of weird because it's one thing, you know, to have all these feet. It's one, you know, whatever. It's still weird and deeply concerning, to be honest with you. But when you start reaching out to children, and remember, this was probably a Nickelodeon ran, you know, Twitter account with Dan Schneider, most likely. But when you start asking kids, to, oh, this really grosses me out, to like write something on the bottom of their feet, hashtag it, and then you're getting to see all of these kids' feet, essentially, that's where the you've really crossed some serious boundaries, you know? It's already weird and not good and honestly concerning, but then when you start doing that, it's bizarre. Now when you go into iCarly, was it iCarly? That guy was a victorious. I think it was iCarly. When you look at him wearing Dan tweets on his shirt, why are you trying to bring kids over there? It's like creepy subliminal shit. <laughs> it is. I'm not like getting conspiracy with it, but it's just like weird. You know, I don't know many creators who put their own name on like a star of theirs t-shirt, getting them to go over to their Twitter account. 
And we're talking about kids, and he's a grown man. Why do you want any kids going over to your Twitter account? Just saying. I'm just saying. We'll continue. Oh, there's Dan Warp again. Oh, it said, vo whoa, I did not see that. It says, follow Dan Warp. Oh, this, this shit's going so fast. They, that is, he's plugging himself, but this is kids. Himself. Why do you want kids going over to your uh, accounts? Follow Dan Warp. I'm sorry. And, 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 and Stella, welcome to the dinner party. Everyone, welcome, welcome to the dinner party. Welcome to um, Eat Predators Daily. This is just blowing my mind because it's one thing when you're working on like an all adult, you know, show and you know what I mean? But having kids get trafficked to your Twitter account is peculiar. And then you see feet everywhere talking about your, your star's feet. This is just, am I overreacting? This is weird. Kids. Dan Warp is Schneider's official blog and social media brand. Here he would I must give it to him though that he really, you know, picked the right name. <laughs> he 100% has a warped mind. It is the most accurate handle for Dan Schneider. Behind the scenes information and personal stories. Specifically during the era of iCarly and Victorious, Dan had begun the practice of hiding Easter eggs referencing his own brand, under the guise that this would inspire viewers to follow him online. His handle was added to the logo of Schneider's- No! I'm sorry, but like as an adult, I don't want kids like going to my accounts. You know what I mean? Like I want- to be talking to adults because I'm an adult. It's one thing that he's, you know, having to work with children on set. That's one thing. But then wanting to stay in contact with the kid viewers when he's at home is another. You know, that to me is bizarre. I don't know any grown adult that wants children to follow them on Instagram, to reach out to them, to hashtag them, to send them essentially like kids feet. I don't know any adult like that, but Dan Schneider. I just don't. He is the only one I know. And that says a lot. That says a lot. Hickory and iCarly characters would be seen wearing such shirts as Dan Warp tweets and wow. follow Dan Warp. But the issue is grander than just Schneider promoting himself. I think the bigger conversation is about Nickelodeon promoting Schneider. Growing up, it was not uncommon for Nickelodeon to broadcast segments illustrating Schneider as the genius who single-handedly created a media empire and shared universe. And why wouldn't they do this? Thanks to Schneider, they were making millions off of several iconic- Yeah, Nickelodeon, you were making millions of dollars off of children that were barely getting paid, by the way. Barely getting paid and never got paid again after you were finished with them. You just chewed them and spit them out. And what's really sad is that I don't even know that's accurate millions. Maybe it's possibly billions, to be quite honest with you. Because even after we left, they were making millions. They were making millions while we were there. And they made millions after we left. And it just makes me, my, it makes me so upset because Nickelodeon 100% exploited not only the children but the parents and honestly agencies too into thinking it's okay to sign contracts where you basically give up everything your likeness like i don't know if i mentioned this in another episode but i'll never forget it i remember some some girl coming up to me while i was you know on zoe 101 and was like oh i just went to walmart and, you know, they have a whole Zoe 101 clothing line and your face was on the poster and like the tags. And I remember being like, what? What do you mean? And then I remember going to my mom. My mom was like, oh, yeah, you know, the contract is basically everything. They own your image. They, were, they owned children's images. 
And they were able to make millions of dollars, like get contracts with Walmart and make loads of money off of children, which is deeply disturbing also when you think about it because they left a lot of us, you know, without any money after we essentially were doing, you know, was doing child labor and working hours for this company. And back then, you know, it wasn't 10 episodes. It's not like a Netflix series, right? Where there was nine, you know, seven to like 10 episodes. This was like, I think on average 26 episodes, a lot of work. You know, and I think we were getting paid like $3,500 a week, which I get it as a kid that is a privileged position to be in. Not many kids, obviously, at all are making that type of money weekly. I understand that. It's just when you think about it in comparison of what Nickelodeon was making off of us is where it gets extremely problematic and concerning. And still, they're like selling, you know, Zoe 101. They're selling all of these shows, Drake and Josh even, to Netflix and all of these streaming platforms and we don't get a dime, not even a cent, not even like those checks, you know, that people post on Twitter being like, you know, this is my residual check. It's like 20 cents. We don't get a dime from all of those hours of working. And I also wonder what their deal was with Walmart when they were using my face, my likeness, my image as a child and making money off of it. And also I'm, I'm sure there were children sadly making those clothes too. Disgusting. Sorry, I just remembered that too, and that kind of pissed me off more. We'll continue. Franchises, not to mention the international Nickelodeon stars that were created because... Oh, do you want me to wait for you? Quiet. Oh, shit, I didn't even realize I was down there. Dude, that's how long I've been awake. I didn't even realize I was down there. ...of his work. But behind the scenes, things were never <laughs> so simple. Part two. The case against Dan Schneider. Okay. So a lot of people... Okay, so now we know that Dan Schneider basically has all of these, you know, subliminal messages of himself and his own social media handles in kids' shows. You're like, okay, again, I just think it's really bizarre that he would want to have kids being... I don't know, brought to his site as a grown man. I just find it to be pretty bizarre. But there's one other part I do want to play here, and I think it's right here. Is this where it was? Child exploitation, allegedly. Rule one. There's also a huge level of ambiguity with this material, which I think is the main reason it was primarily left out of the Quiet On Set documentary. But this has been a primary focus of my research ever since I started this mess. So when I was watching iCarly, I wanted to find some way to represent how overpresent this issue is in Dan Schneider's material. And so I actually kept a tally so I could come up with, an, with a number that I could then cite for this segment. And after all my research, this is the number. 28. There are 28 episodes of iCarly that do not feature some kind of weird foot thing. And to be completely transparent, the reason that number is so ridiculous is that for several seasons of the show, the feet moments would be edited into the opening sequence, so every time you start watching an episode, there it fucking is. Right there, looping every. Oh, I can't. I'm. Oh God. Okay, I just. I'm sorry. I just can't. I. I honestly can't even watch it anymore. It's just. Yeah. The, it's just. I can't. I'm so over the feet that I'm actually over the feet now. I think. I don't care how many times, how many you tally up. It was enough. It was a whole lot of it, and then also he was tweeting at home about it as not well. Gonna duck, not gonna duck, Not gonna duck. <laughs> Not gonna do it anymore. I honestly can't. It, he he he's rotting my brain. To be honest, Dan Schneider is rotting my brain. Okay, so uh, where was I going with this? So John Vaccaro. So now that we know how Dan Schneider was really embedding, you know, uh, his social media accounts and his websites into his own shows, it got me thinking. Like, what did you know, John Vaccaro's websites? look like when he was working at Nickelodeon. 
And when I went back to the Wayback Machine, I found Nickelodeon during the time that he was working. Um, I mean, John Vicar was working there. And so let's take a look. And by the way, I want to see if you guys spot it. So do you all see anything a little bit peculiar here? I'll just zoom in and we can start just moving around. Okay. So we, we see the John Vaccaro vibe. There's that bubbly uh, whatever shit again. See, let me know if and when you see something peculiar here. Anyone? I spy with my little eye. What is it? Yeah, too much time on their feet, 100%. Too much time on their feet. Okay, so we see slime time, but what's above it? <laughs> ah, what's hot? I'm sorry. For a kid's website, putting what's hot, I just, I haven't seen anywhere else. I, I don't honestly remember it until after Paris Hilton, which was way past this point, by the way. This was like 98, 99. Paris Hilton was way past that. It was like, that's hot. We get it. That was like the whole thing with her. But I honestly did not see any kid really using that term when I was younger. And I am a 90s kid, like early 2000s kid. And I don't remember anyone ever using that word until after Paris Hilton said, that's hot. I swear. And so, oh, wow, Elizabeth, thank you so much. That's so sweet. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. What, the what's hot? Okay, well, then maybe go full screen for a second. I went to the, the, the minutes that he, he pulled up for me, and I just honestly... 102.46. I was there. There was nothing there. 102.46 is... 102.46 is... I was just watching it. And that's all he gave me. I'm sorry. But that's all he... And it's 104.24? 104... Oh, here. Maybe it's here. 104.24. Okay, let's see. Now there are two different perspectives to take on this topic, and I feel it is my duty to present oh, both of this. these, partially because despite these being contradictory seeming, you know, perspectives, I kind of believe both of these to some extent. It is difficult to talk about depictions of feet in children's media without first addressing the fact that we are in an unprecedented era. Okay, we got, yeah, this, this is basically yeah. him basically saying that they're, you know, obviously this... kids, you know, if we look at something as adults, he's saying there can be a projection of what we have learned through the internet about, you know, for example, fetishes, uh, the list goes on. But then he goes into basically saying, but when it comes to Dan Schneider, this is where he personally feels that Dan, you know, crossed the line. But I wish this was just a little Huge bit bigger because I want to go into this. Gross out humor written and made by someone. I don't have who's... it then. I'm so sorry. Oh, there is. Oh, there's the tweet, though. I mean, this tweet alone. Look, Sam and Cat tomorrow right on the bottom of your foot. Take a pic and use Sam and Cat Saturday. We'll retweet. Why are you even wanting to retweet this and follow until our fingers get sore? Also, doesn't that sound like Dan? Like, I don't know what, I don't think an intern would even honestly write something like this. Oh, sorry, you guys. <laughs> um, Sam and Kat. I mean, this tweet alone is just, uh, this is Nickelodeon. I mean, there, look, it says Nickelodeon right here to the right. So Nickelodeon is running this account. And apparently it's still up, which means they obviously cannot remove it and don't want to. Because if they did, it, their lawyers would say that's admitting to guilt. Like, you're admitting that something was wrong, and now, you know, you're removing it. So it makes sense, kind of. But then also, no, I, I already watched all of that. 
It was, I watched it and that was not where it was. Also this video, would you like to see Victoria Justice pour ketchup all over her feet? Well, here you go. And then he goes to see these off sites again. Here's the slap.com that we're gonna get into when we go into the Amanda Please website. But this is what's so bizarre. He's telling people to go follow him, right? This is at Dan Warp. And look what the fuck, sorry, he's tweeting. What are you doing, dude? You're not a kid. You're a grown man. You are crossing so many boundaries here, in my opinion. Having kids come over there is already weird, but then you're you're doing that and getting all these kids to go to this creepy website, probably made by John Vaccaro himself, and it's just like, what is happening? What is happening? I know, I'm trying to find Miko, but the the, the minutes that you gave me isn't the one that I know you're talking about. There's a part basically in this video I did. I watched the bin between those minutes. See, there's no here. I watched all the way from the minute to let's see. I don't see it, you guys. If I don't have actual minutes, I'm getting out of here until we personally find it because YouTube's kind of weird. Like it will show you the thumbnails, but it it's not always fully accurate. But essentially, basically, there were these act. There, there was footage, which I don't even know if we should even be showing this. I don't even know if I want to. Basically, what ended up happening was, I guess Nickelodeon started running footage of kids literally submitting videos of them with their feet, and they're really weird. They're not even really weird. They're out of control, and it's young children literally impersonating Dan Schneider content and then Nickelodeon was running it. I don't know if anyone remembers this, but it's it, it it it's real and Nickelodeon was literally playing footage of children reenacting Dan Schneider's warped mind, you know, feet kid content and Nickelodeon was airing it. And I just when you see the footage they blur it out. They blur out the kid, thank God, because that kid should not, ha this should not honestly be played. But it's really disturbing to see how Nickelodeon was not only green lighting this, but they were like amplifying it. And that tweet alone, when it comes to Sam and Cat, is just out of control. You know, it's just like, wow, now you're becoming Dan Schneider himself. Are you really any different than Dan Schneider? So, Fast forward now, we're getting into Nick.com. What I found very weird about it was that right away it says what's hot. Don't really like that. Again, here's this is literally while John Vaccaro was working there. So you can see that it is his shitty web design. And you're like, okay, that's odd. Got it. Not cool whatsoever. Moving on though. This is where, hey, do you see this? The design? What does it look like? I mean, let's be honest here. It's the same. It's the same. And what I think maybe possibly ended up happening when either John Vaccaro left with Dan Schneider's wife, you know, and moved on to other jobs, I think he was doing personal web design for offsites maybe for Dan Schneider. And Nickelodeon was maybe allowing that. Maybe Dan Schneider liked his web design and it was more of a personal um, Schneider's bakery you know, uh, contracting deal. I'm not really sure, but I can't help but notice how this right here, see this, and then you look over here, this is very, very similar. And I'm sorry, this website is so fucking weird. First of all, let's just play the music. Okay, this is like someone who's obviously obsessed with Amanda, and I get it. I know with Penelope Taint, Penelope Taint, I keep forgetting that's what the last name is. Penelope Taint, we get it. Like, the whole point of Penelope Taint was that this, you know, person was obsessed with Amanda, and that was her whole thing. And though at the same time, I do have some problems with it as a, you know, survivor of stalking, you know, it was hyper-normalizing stalking behavior. I get it you know, we can, we can have a, a, a conversation about this for hours. Some people might not agree. I just think now looking back at it, it was a, it's a little bit weird because it got into this website 
where it really was almost becoming real, the obsession with Amanda. And again, she's a child. And to, to tie this in with my experience with Nickelodeon when it came to Walmart, I don't think Amanda Bynes necessarily approved, right, of this off-site website to be created. Most likely Nickelodeon owned her likeness, owned everything about her, even apparently image of her body parts, uh, and was able to, legally speaking, with a child, make a website about her where it is a website that is essentially designed in a way through like a stalker's obsession, you know? And it's very clear from the first page here that you see, it's Amanda Bynes, you know, everywhere in the background. It says it's by Penelope, you know, Taint, which is already such a, you know, horrific uh, uh, name and it just so deeply disturbs me. But going into this, you go into the archive of the Amanda Please website, and there's just something weird about this website in general when it comes to what is it? You know, you would never think that necessarily this was just a Nickelodeon, you know, website. It's just something about it is very weird. And as you look into it, there's a couple things that stand out. Number one, this. Body parts. This is creepy. This is creepy because, again, we have to remember that Dan Schneider was legit putting subliminal messages, you know, in his own way, right? Just boosting himself on kids' shirts, saying to follow him and saying, you know, even on his Twitter, he was saying to follow the slap, for example, trying to get kids to go to these off-site websites of Nickelodeon where things just weren't right, they just weren't right. This is bizarre to me. Body parts and also sniffing shoes, which again goes back to feet. Here's dirty foot again. Here's toenail. You're like, what exactly is this? And there was an amazing, I mean, there was like a TikTok video that was uh, going around online that really brought attention. I wish I remembered uh, that person's name. I'm so sorry, but it brought attention to this this website. And once I saw it, it really just reminded me instantly of John Vaccaro's. Just instantly reminded me of John Vaccaro's websites. Look at Amanda's shoe trick. You're like, okay, journalist in a jacuzzi, popper pants, which by the way, that whole, I don't know if anyone remembers that skit. I covered it in one episode of No More Nostalgia where I watched that footage and it was so... It was so bad. It was just so, so bad. I don't know if anyone's seen that, but it's just so freaking bad. Um, but I think there's an other part here. Name that body part. Now check this out. Like what name that body part? What is this? It's just irresponsible. You know what I mean? Oh, look at sick popples. What the hell is that? For a second, I thought I was saying Sickelodi in the corner. I was like, did we edit this? But we did not. Okay, so let's click and see if we can uh, get to body parts. I'm so scared. Like, no, there should be no link that says body parts with a child. I'm sorry. This is just bizarre. Okay, let's let's wait for... Okay, if I'm a Mac person, I'm Mac people. Where is this taking me? Oh, is it not this one? Am I wrong with this? I thought that that's what it was. What link is it? What link was it? Was it name the body part that goes through? I'm scared. I feel like I'm going to click on something and something... Oh, okay. You know... Obviously, this is someone's hand, but what the fuck? You know what I mean? It's framed, too, and it's named that body part with a young girl's face all around it. And again, there's two ways to look at this, right? This is ridiculous. And also, again, Nickelodeon technically owns this child's imagery, owns this child's likeness, and is probably giving it off to some web designer to make a uh, website that is in the same vein as something that uh, Penelope Taint would create. And I get it, you know, but when it's children involved, 
you're also exposing children to the internet. This was like way before, you know, now. This was, what, 2002, basically, when this website came out. And this was way before killed children were being exposed to the internet or on the internet like this, right? And so many weird people, you know, are also just kind of predators are just like on the internet, right? Just like everybody else is on the internet. And to be this irresponsible with a website when you are a corporation, when you are a company that is literally trying to create sometimes even educational content for children, it's very alarming. When you have a site that says name the body parts, body parts, about feet, toenails, dirty foot, photos of a young girl, it is so beyond irresponsible that it's hard for me to think it's even fully innocent. You know what I mean? I, I can see that someone can say, oh, it was just this and that. Yeah. And though, what the fuck is body parts? That, I don't care what era you're in. You know what I mean? I don't care what era you're in. If someone passed this by me and I was working for a company and I see a child's face everywhere and it says name that body part, I would, I think I would flip a table. I think I'd be like, what the, you know, this, if someone, I, I, if someone literally came to me with that, it was like, can you green light this? I would, they would be fired instantly. And so it's very bizarre for me personally to know a whole bunch of adults allowed this to happen. Also, I'm not sure if Amanda Bynes even took these photos. I'm not even sure if this is her hand. But either way, someone who is just, a, you know, surfing the internet, basically, can find this website and just be weird, you know, because the website itself is freaking weird. And it's, it's seen through the lens of, you know, an obsessed person with, you know... A child. Ugh, it just, and, and why are the, what does it say? Sweet, what does it say? Is this the only, and it's like right to me. Like the whole thing. Wait, there's just like more photos of her knuckles. Her glorious appendage to view. This is just weird. And it's all hands. Congratulations, citizen. The body part you have been view, viewing is sweet Amanda's hand. FYI, she has another one that is equally as wonderful, please. Just freaking weirdos, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just irresponsible, too. You know, I know people out there can think it's a whole bunch of different things, and it's easy to go in so many different directions, but when I'm looking at this, it's just so beyond irresponsible. And though now with my own personal experience, when it comes to John Vaccaro and Dan Schneider, I really don't like it, if you know what I mean. There's something weird about the fact that John Vaccaro personally is following me and all of my accounts, and he is somehow linked to these weird websites. Just doesn't make me necessarily feel good let's see if we can pull up some of these images too hold on hopefully i'm gonna like open this okay how do i do that oh yeah i see it all right let's check this so look at this photo it says my, uh, my amanda scrapbook it's just fucking weird man like adults Doing this in general is just weird. It says, sweet, sweet Amanda, all I can ask is when. And, you know, as somebody who has a stalker, this is why it's all so weird with Penelope Taint and John Vaccaro, and then, like, Penelope Taint is literally Amanda's stalker in the show, you know what I mean? And all of this intertwined, stalkers literally do this shit. They make websites, like, with obsession. Some of them might be uh, lovey, lovey, you know, like, it looks like that. Like, when, when will I see Amanda? You know, and then some stalkers also get really mean when they're either rejected in some way or and they view rejection in some way by the person or from the person, right? And they can make websites that are even obsessive and um, not nice, right? Like, super mean. And so when I see this website, considering what Penelope Taint was, it's alarming because no one should be ever taking the image of anyone and making a website that looks obsessive. And you know who the real Penelope Tain is? Nickelodeon. 
Nickelodeon is the real, true Penelope taint. Because Dan and John Vaccaro can argue with one another for years about who was behind this website, who did the exact, you know, web design of it. But we all know that it was an offsite of Nick.com and that Nickelodeon was allowing this type of website that had a child on the Internet with an archive of this child's body parts. Yeah, when you click on it, it's elbows and, and knuckles and, 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 and thank God, obviously. But why? You know, why, why was it that in the first place? It just doesn't make any sense but it gets weirder when it comes to dan schneider and john vaccaro and these nickelodeon off-site websites and you know this one's the most disturbing i i don't know if it's the most disturbing they're all kind of disturbing but there's something really bad about this one because obviously a lot of the ariana grande footage that we've all now seen uh, came from uh, this offsite that was called The Slap. So let's check it out. Here it is. So here's uh, The Slap. And uh, wow. I mean, the fact that that alone is even allowed on a fucking kid's website, The Slap kids and the sound I mean I'm gonna play it a hundred times and look what's underneath it look at what is underneath the slap what's hot and this is the website this is the website Block him, sis. I mean, I'm leaving it unblocked because I want him to respond. What's making him weirder is the fact that John Vaccaro hasn't responded. You know what I mean? If he had nothing to hide and he, you know, whatever, which I don't believe personally, he would just respond and go, oh, I've been following this account for a long time, like when I was working at Nickelodeon. But he can't, right? Because he knows it's so freaking weird that he is following e-predators and following my account, like the little Penelope Taint he is, honestly. Like the little Penelope Taint that he honestly is. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I will block him eventually, but I, he should really be responding and, and trying to get out of the, the absolute weirdness of, of his existence, honestly. So this is also just extremely irres... Ooh, that scares me every time it happens. Um, this is a little bit weird, too. Just what's hot... And then we fast forward to that content that obviously I just don't like playing that content because it's just so bad what Dan Schneider did and Nickelodeon with that content that I just don't want it anywhere near my platform because it's so deeply disturbing. But it was called The Slap. And, you know, when you think about Nickelodeon just l allowing these offsites to happen, which I think, again, does this not look like John Vaccaro's web design? It does, right? I mean, here's the bubbly. So it just, you can see it. It's, it's there. His presence is known. You know what I mean? Let's see what this guy says. Is, someone told me that this puppet is Dan Schneider's voice. Is that true? I'm curious. I, I'll let you guys tell me. Let's listen to what he has to say. Oh, what? Can I not? Oh, Stop clicking on me. Okay. Can I smell it? Okay. Shut up. Shut it. I don't like box of briefs. What? Robbie's a tool bag. That's the kind of chiz America wants to see. <laughs> what does that mean, sir? <laughs> that one I was just, what the hell does Help. that mean? I'm being held captive by a nerd. What? That's the kind of chiz America wants to see. Okay. You know me, you love me. Whoa, you brush your teeth today? Because you need to. This guy is That's so... That's the kind of chiz America wants to see. There's... What's Spanish for stupid redhead? Okay. I don't play like that. Oh, my sciatica. Give me a kiss, sugar. Ew! I got the high blood pressure. Is this Dan Schneider? I don't yeah, like boxer briefs. Wait, what is the chiz? 
I'm sorry. Am I am I out of the loop with this? I just what is the chiz? I, I, I mean, I don't think chiz is anything. I th I think he I think it is like us like I think it is supposed to be jizz. Oh no! And then and then I also find it interesting that it's that it's like make Rex say stuff. Um, oh, true with the mouth. It has yeah, it has like the e predator's mouth, which is interesting. And then but also it's like. Like oh it's my so, god, it's so it close does make, make sex say stuff that it's oh. Wait, why does um Dan Schneider's stuff all have these innuendos in it? Like, it's like always what? so close to something. It. Yeah, like it's always one step away. Like someone said, a man to please is like a man to please, and I was like. Okay, you know, that's also just her name, right? But then they did put please after it, and then it also does sound like that if you say it fast, Amanda, please. You hear that, definitely do. But, like, why is Dan Schneider's content always one step away from exploitation, you know what I mean, of children? Uh, like, here's that's... Some, here's some context. Someone said, uh, chiz was how they said stuff in the show Victorious. Still, still weird as fuck, though. Yeah, because, listen, chiz sounds like we all know. We can't say it. We all know what it is. Right. That's like the weird stuff he would do. Yes. And now you're right. Make Rex say stuff. If you put S in front of EX, it's exactly that. That is really, and it says do it. It says do it. Make, wow. I'm like, and wait. Then, and then it's like, oh, my sciatica pain or something. It's like. Uh -huh. Wait, wait, I'm scared. Wait, what else is it? Does it say anything else? Oh, you can only, like, click on it when Robbie's it... Robbie's a tool bag. Okay. Don't like touch that. What? You know me. You love me. It's so weird. And I'm pretty sure that someone said that it was Dan Schneider's, you know, voice. When it came to this, uh, whatever. But it's so creepy. It, it doesn't and necessarily y sound like him, in my opinion. No, it doesn't sound like him in this, but it is in the show. So oh, I feel oh, like okay. somebody else did the voice for the website, but in the show it is Dan Schneider, which is so bizarre. Like that's what's like, I don't know. It just kind of freaks me out. Look at you have clips and pics and tunes and you're like, okay, what is this again? Exactly. What is this? Especially after seeing, you know, oh wait, you can play this game. See, this is misogyny, though, too. You know what I mean? This is also, like, misogyny, where the girl... I feel like... I don't know if anyone noticed, but doesn't it feel like Kat was kind of, like, another version of Nicole a little bit? Like, that's how I feel about when I would watch little clips of Kat. Like, she just seemed like Dan archetype of the boy-crazy, you know, uh, girl... Oh, I want to look-read it. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna read some of the fan funding while while I look at this really quickly. It reminds me to do it, and I have to do it. So let's look at this game though, really quickly. What what could the game possibly be? Wow, the music is still attached to this website. Okay, it says kisses. Grab a kiss and stop the game for seven seconds. Yeah, you know, you can look at this a couple ways, but really it feels like misogyny in my opinion. What what is what is the game? What? What am I supposed to do? Oh, you're just going through this? This is such a lame game. <laughs> wait, this is not Wait, what? This is the weird Okay, so I get it. Like, base. Okay, you're not supposed to hit the clouds, I'm guessing. Okay, okay. You know what? The music is enough for me to almost want to jump out of the studio. <laughs> I'm like, I need to. Whoa! I forgot that we need to cover this today. Some something came out today. I don't know if anyone heard about this, but reveals. I, we'll we'll cover that in a second. But here's the point of all of this. When you look at these websites that were in 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 my opinion specifically. Dan Schneider, you know, was featured and it was his content. 
on these offsites, these Nick offsites, that somehow look like the original director of content for Nickelodeon.com, John Vaccaro. And not only John Vaccaro, but also Dan Schneider's wife. Dan Schneider's wife was doing, you know, the content at Nickelodeon as well. And now John Vaccaro still creates the website Hungry Girl. And you're like, okay. A little bit of a weird connection. Also, why are they having him follow me and, you know, whatever. But it's so irresponsible the way that they were allowing this content to, you know, just be out there. And not just kids are going to probably be witnessing, you know, these offsites, but also adults, you know, uh, potentially predators, right? And if you're doing these weird signalings, it's it signals. What's the word I'm looking for? There's like a term for this when when something's um, virtue signal. Oh God, I'm blanking on what it is. But like when you're signaling something to people, that's what most of Dan Schneider's stuff feels like to me. Where when you look at it, almost first glance, you see something else. You know what I mean? And then you look at it and you're like, oh, it says Rex. Or, you know what I mean? And, and, and you're like, taint. And they're like, oh, it's spelled a little bit differently. All of this is like subliminal. I'm sorry. I just think it's really true. There just feels this, this is my opinion, just subliminal messaging. And then to know that Dan Schneider was promoting his own social media accounts. And these social media accounts were su super irresponsible, in my opinion, when it came to contacting or wanting to be in contact with, you know, children in one way, just because of how his tweets were sounding. They weren't tweets to the world, to adults. They were a lot of tweets uh, about children's feet and tickling feet and ketchup and this on the feet. There's just something off about it. And that's why I want people to know who John Vaccaro is, because if he had no problem working for him and still does, he should have no problem now, right? Being Good known evening, as and welcome to Vaccaro. <laughs> welcome to Vaccaro. You know, this is kind of the man in front, behind, around, you know, yeah, dog whistle. That's what it is. Dan Schneider has dog whistles in most of everything that Dan Schneider creates, from websites to TV shows to this to that. Everything has a dog whistle to it. And you're like, what? Am I weird? It almost gaslights you. You know what I mean? You're like, am I weird for thinking this? And I think that's not saying specifically Dan Schneider, just kind of examining it. It's like almost like that's the point, you know, where, where you go there and then you feel weird for going there, you know, and it's like, ah, ha, ha, got you to slap. Oh, I don't know. What's the definition? Like a dog whistle. I don't know if it's dog whistle. It's more virtue signaling. There's like a term for it when you're signaling subliminal is it dog whistle? Do NDAs expire? Will we ever hear the full truth? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, NDAs do not expire. They are sadly for um, ever. But when something is criminal, for example, you do technically have the right to go to the police and the you know no one can stop you from that. It's more of a psychological game a lot of people are finding out. But the sad part about it is, is if the police don't charge that individual, then you telling what was in your non-disclosure agreement to the world will will have all these different types of violations. So they'll they'll put a price like fifty thousand dollar violation for this, sixty thousand dollar violation for that, and instead of suing you, that's not what happens. You get pulled into arbitration behind closed doors where the public cannot know that this lawsuit is taking place. And they hire these extremely expensive retired judges, these arbitrators that are usually on the side of the corporations because the corporations are the ones who keep hiring these arbitrators, these retired judges for these cases. And you end up having huge judgments over your head, sometimes $2 million dollars. Some NDAs say even indirectly, you know, even indirectly mentioning this will be like a $60,000 violation. So even though you can technically go to the police about right criminal activity, it's sad because not the, the criminal system doesn't really do much. 
You know, sometimes police DAs aren't doing anything. Sometimes these DAs are in the pockets of these powerful individuals. And if they don't do anything, guess where you land? In arbitration with sometimes a $2 million judgment that messes up your whole entire life. So that's why the, these non-disclosure agreements are, are, are very psychological. It, it's psychological and it is damaging when it comes you know, to money, but you're reliant on the police. And when, when can we ever really honestly rely on the police? Alexa, I just realized the name of the fancy restaurant in Zoe 101 is called Vaccaro, like John Vaccaro. Yes, Michael. Good evening and welcome to Vaccaro. Yes, that is John Vaccaro. Isn't that wild? They're like this. And he's a website. Um, oh, I can't really see that. Right. Suggestive language in like political messaging from a particular group without provoking opposition. Yeah, it's like it doesn't provoke you enough to like do anything because it's subtle. It's suggestive, but it's not in your face. Yeah, basically it's silent to most, but only some people can right. hear it. Because there's certain frequencies only a dog could hear. So dog yeah, that's whistle. Where, that's where it comes from. Right. Yeah. It's just like, a, you, you, oh, yeah. It's so gross. Like, to think about that is so gross. All right, what does it say? J2, get some rest now. Take care, you all. Bye, J2001. Thank you for being here. I feel like the voice in the website sounds like the guy who interviewed him. I forgot. Oh, bo wait, Boogie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I, I was literally thinking the same thing. Oh, wow. <laughs> wait, do you think it's Boogie? That's wild. Wait, how close are Boogie and, and Dan? Is it, it I mean, close like, enough to clo get that weird interview. True, that is close enough. The puppet on Victoria's was voiced by Jack, oh, Jake Farrow. He was a writer and producer of many of Dan's shows. Interesting, I've never met Jake Farrow. Who the hell is Jake Farrow? Okay, so it's not Boogie. Um, Kyle Massey's mom um, exposed on E Predators Reddit group under Kyle Massey's mom is oh my god, wait Grande. Okay, so I guess there's something going on with Kyle Massey's mom on Reddit. I will definitely check it out. Honestly, though, she that was so triggering too. It's just so sad because I thought she actually cared. Like she was actually so nice to me on set. I don't I don't get what happens. Writer 24, link to odd thing on Zoe 101, site on Reddit. Okay, thank you so much. Wait, Miko, definitely let's remember that. Link to odd thing on Zoe 101, site on Reddit. And yes, Gabriel, I'm going to read that fan fiction. I haven't gotten around to it yet. And iCarly, Spencer dates Gibby's mom and stops he because he sees Gibby's face. Spencer then kisses G's mom anyways with Gibby's face. SP many times in the show had G doing things like massages while SP moaned. Ew, what? See, this is what I mean with Dan Schneider. It's like, this is not normal. There's not other shows, by the way, where people can just go and type something like that. You know what I mean? And that that somehow is real, what this person just said. What is it? Rub um, moon? Like, that's not normal. And Dan Schneider has so many incidences just like this. And by the way, I have something to say. I can't say it yet because this happened actually when I was uh, coming into the, the, the studio today. But someone did reach out to me about a Dan Schneider experience and it was not good. And it, you know, is, you know, obviously I'm keeping this anonymous. I haven't even responded to this person but, you know, here it goes. Here it begins. Like, this was somebody who worked for Dan Schneider. You know, this is a verified person. This person's very real. And, you know, I'm already getting messages about, I mean, paragraphs of stories about their experience with Dan Schneider. This one was definitely the worst one I've gotten when it comes to messages. And you're like, oh, and so it begins. So it begins. People are starting to feel like at least they can tell their story, even if it's anonymously, right? At least people are starting to tell their story, and it really grossed me out. It 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 it, um, it was not it was not good. That's all I'm gonna say. It was really really not good. But here we begin. I want to say thank you to all the new members here. Do you have any memories from being on the All That set during the tenth anniversary? Did you ca did you meet the cast members of All That who have spoken out on the dock? You know, I know Leon. Leon has been so kind and um, just, I've known him now for a little while since I first protested Nickelodeon and he gave me a shout out when I was protesting Nickelodeon for the first time. 
But other than that, I did end up having a conversation with Giovanni recently, like just a quick one. I reached out to her just basically saying, you know, like we did it together, like proud of us. Um, and the other ones, no, I haven't. I haven't really. But the, I remember the when I worked on the all that, I remember just I don't remember even talking to anybody. I feel like it was so I think even Josh Peck was there during that time I went on to was it on air dare? Maybe it was on air dare. Was it on air dare? I can't even remember. But yeah, I don't. Okay, wait, here we go, though. Angelique Bates on all that kids that was replaced was physically ABUSED by her mom. When CPS was called, execs told her not to tell and fired her anyway similar. Wow, really? Is that the story we're about to read? Is that the story we're about to read? Welcome to all the new members. Um, Dumality. Dan had a distinct aesthetic for his own branding, but also in his shows, especially with iCarly being so web focused. What about Amanda Please? Yeah, this is the thing that I didn't realize about Dan Schneider is him with websites and his wife, too. Like how I remember Hungry Girl when I was little, like when I met his wife, I remember the website. I remember Hungry Girl. I like I even remember I think she gave us a cookbook. And you're like, hungry girl, you know, something about that too is sorry, just kind of, the whole thing is just kind of weird. But what I remember from her was specifically that website, was specifically that website. It seems like Dan Schneider has some type of, I don't know, something about websites. If you go to Dan Warp website now, it brings you to his fake apology. Lol, happy space. I know I saw that. I saw that. He had to take everything off and now it's just that apology because nothing he can leave on. He's scared to leave anything on because look at how everything leads. He's been honestly, he's been found out in the way that matters, right? Where now people do understand that whatever that was, whatever he wants to call it, was inappropriate. And it was creepy. And he did exploit children. I'm sorry that he did that. And Nickelodeon allowed it. And Nickelodeon was complicit. And the slap really did happen. And these offsites are freaking weird. You have body parts for Amanda, please? Please. No. No thank you is really what it needs to be called. No Fucking thank you. So irresponsible. It's like beyond irresponsible. You're an inspiration. You're my fave. Oh, thank you so much, Christy. You're so sweet. Happy space. Okay, that's it. Wait, what's your current job besides EP? Being a mom? You know what I do after here? Children. I have to take care of my children. And, you know, that's, that's what I do. And rest. Because honestly, this is... You know, something that I talked about a little bit ago when I was uh, first, you know, on here was how much emotional labor honestly goes into this work because I am a survivor myself. And so whenever I talk about these topics, I do need to decompress after. Like, it is a lot. I, I feel it in my body, depending on the day, right? Some topics are a little bit, I try to balance it. But, you know, some topics, like, for example, I've been kind of procrastinating when it comes to P. Diddy because I know that's going to be, like, you know, it's a lot. Like, you have to really talk about a lot. And as a survivor, it's a lot. <laughs> and I have to make sure that I'm taking care of myself. And so, you know, once I leave here, I spend time with my children and I play with them and we watch a movie. And I just try to really decompress after... I protest or after I am here on the show because it's really important that we also take care of ourselves when we're doing any type of advocacy work because if we're starting to feel drained, then we can't really necessarily show up at all. And it really starts with us. And so we have to make sure that we take care of ourselves. So that is honestly what I am doing when I'm not here <laughs> is trying to relax my body to be quite honest with you like even yeah, today i was mom just pointed out that like even hungry girl is like even can be that's what i said i just said that a minute ago yeah yeah hungry girl is also weird it's all this dog whistling you know just weird weird 
I don't like it. Just want to say thank you and the victims who spoke out, who gave us a childhood when you and them sacrificed theirs. Nyx was a staple for me growing up. Truly sad to see on the dock. Thank you so much, AirPod user. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. You're such an inspiration, Alexa. I grew up watching Zoe 101, and I find it weird now how Dan had Nicole leave the show suffering from obsessive male gender disorder. Pretty S-E-X-I-S-T, in my opinion. Aubrey, that was another thing. You have to get, you have to understand, when I left the show and I saw that episode where it said that, you know, I remember someone, like, saying I had to watch it. It was so bad even then. I was like, that's how they say I left. Like, that's why I left the show or why I left PCA. And that's why I say, Dan, we know exactly how you view girls and how you view women. We've seen it in all of the archetypes that you, portray, you know, platform or write or create into your TV series. We got it. We totally get it. You also put them, you know, on beds on, you know, websites called The Slap where it literally makes this sound, by the way. Oh, can we hear this? Oh, no, you're fine. Like, what is this with what's hot? You're like, Dan, you can't, you're, the dog whistles are actually kind of loud. I'm like, the whistle, the dog whistles are becoming loud as fuck. Like, they're just straight up whistles at this point. And oh my God, look at all these new members. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you so so much for being here so you know i'm going to talk obviously to this person that reached out to me you know today about her story and it was just really not good you guys like i think that was not a good one that i obviously heard today and very deeply concerning and this is why we need to make sure that we are putting pressure on networks like Nickelodeon and Disney that work with children and make sure that these kids are protected on set. Because what I heard recently today, when it came to Dan Schneider and another show of his, uh, let's just say it's that bad, right? Like there is more to add to Quiet on Set, to be honest with you, a lot more to add. It does sound like a belt, to be honest. That's so true. It really, really does. Yeah, I don't think the, the island has nothing to do with Nick. I think it's, you know, this is where, this is what I want to also say to everyone out there. Let's make sure that we don't get caught up in any of the uh, sensationalism of any of this because usually that's controlled opposition. Like, usually that favors the bad guys, to be honest with you. It favors the bad guys when we start focusing on things that, you know, are just a little bit more further out there than what matters right here in the moment. And what matters right here in the moment is we got to get these children protected right on set. We got to make sure that there are things being put into place that these networks cannot fucking do this ever again. And that people like Dan Schneider aren't in there. Like today I said on Megyn Kelly, we were talking about this. And she was like, oh, let me read you the Nickelodeon statement. And she's like reading to me the Nickelodeon statement. And it's like, it's really hard for me to fucking believe what Nickelodeon is saying when I'm 99.9% .9 positive that Brian Robbins, that's right, Brian Robbins, who's the president of Nickelodeon right now, was who Drake Bell's dad went to. And Brian Robbins, from, you know, my psychic abilities didn't help and instead gaslit Drake Bell's dad. And if Brian Robbins would have stepped in and helped Drake's dad go make a formal complaint, believed him and removed Brian Peck, I can't stand Brian Robbins. Actually, sorry, the more I sit here, I'm sweating already because it's hot in here and I'm trying to finish up, but I can't stand you, Brian Robbins. Because how much have, could have been maybe prevented if you would have listened to fucking Drake Bell's dad? Rot and piss. Yeah, rot and piss, honestly. And you should not, and it's always those guys, those fucking dudes, those bros in those suits that keep getting promoted. While all of us kids, like what Drake Bell said the other day, is that, you know, Nickelodeon's making millions of dollars while he, while he still has to pay for his therapy. You know what I mean? And this was a predator that was legit hired on a Nick set. And that Brian Robbins, when got the complaint, gaslit the dad. 
And now he's the head of Paramount, too. How's all those cars in that mansion, bro? How do you sleep at night, honestly, knowing that? You know, it just makes my stomach, that's what needs to change. And this whole formal complaints issue is honestly so annoying because Brian Robbins' job and Kieran, what was her name? God, I'm blanking on what her last name is because it's been a long day. Kieran is the, was the vice president at the time during, you know, the Brian Peck era. And, you know, they said, oh, this formal complaint. That's what Kieran's job was, was to go help Drake Bell's dad go make a formal complaint and believe him when he said what he said. And instead, no, that didn't happen. And this could have been prevented. So, Brian Robbins, you're fired. If Nickelodeon actually gives a, honestly, a fuck about any of this, I, I, Brian, Brian Robbins is fired. You know what I mean? Let's hear what he has to say. Instead, he's hiding behind Nickelodeon's brand and Nickelodeon's fucking lawyers. And I see you, Brian. Step up. Take accountability for your actions. And Karen, too. But Karen doesn't work in Nickelodeon anymore. That's why I'm concerned about you. Because you're still working there. And you're still working around children. You've got some explaining to do. But, you know... You know, we have another week. We have another day here. Maybe you'll uh, say something. or And also, please, Dan Schneider, also, if Dan Schneider also cared at all, which we all know he doesn't, in my opinion. He doesn't care, in my opinion. He would have returned his Lifetime Achievement Award, don't you think? I feel like he would have. I feel like he would have, but he hasn't. And so it's very hard for me to believe that Dan Schneider really cares when he's just holding on to that, you know. That award still. Can we all say Brian Robbins, you're fired? Let's let's put it in the chat. I just want to see everyone before we we finish up. I'll be here obviously tomorrow, but let's before I before I get out of here, um, let's put Ro Brian Robbins, you're fired. Let's put some power to survivors in the chat. And I just want to say thank you again to everybody here. Um, if you find any more information when it comes to John Vaccaro or any of these websites, please email epredators at gmail.com. I am honestly really still digging into all of this because John Vaccaro is a huge question mark for many reasons, and he's connected to Dan Schneider. So power to survivors and Brian Robbins. What? Oh, shit, Angelique. Wait, you guys, I forgot. Wait, I forgot. Okay, let, let's, let's read this really quickly. I love seeing Power to Survivors, though, while I'm doing this. I, I think it's the same thing, right? I think the Yahoo just takes you to... Or no. Okay, okay. Let's see. Angelique Bates exposes Nickelodeon for allegedly making S advances. It says, former All That star Angelique Bates has accused Nickelodeon and Dan Schneider of bullying, instigating, and verbal ABUSE. And now she says a producer made S advances towards her mother. The 43-year-old spoke exclusively with The Blast, telling us some of the incidences she experienced when working with the network as a child. Angelique Bates recalls cases of bullying and instigating, I believe. Okay. Oh, God. I don't even know where to go. God, his websites are so... All, I mean, I think I can just... They're the same thing. I'm, isn't it the same thing? Let's see, a few cases bullying and instigating that production was aware of, especially when it would come to one cast member. She exclusively told the blast without naming names. A situation occurred amongst few, and when I defended myself instead of the cast member getting in trouble, I was brought in with my mother and threatened to be fired in a production meeting. That's so similar to what I experienced. Wow. That is so wild that she had a similar experience when it came. I mean, they didn't fire me, but they let me know it wasn't, you know, Nicole 101. It was Zoe 101. 
Wow, my mother defended me in that situation and called production out for a few things, including not stopping the situation, especially being it was ongoing. She continued, of course they weren't pleased. Huh. Wow. And also, Angelique Bates says Nickelodeon made S advances towards her mom? What? She further explained that the retaliation was not a one-time thing. There were a few things that played into the retaliation from production, as I've mentioned throughout the years. She told us... And another one I've always mentioned was because my mother turned down S advances from one of the producers. What? Although she didn't go into detail, this was obviously a hard subject for her to discuss. When speaking to us about the matter, it seemed as though she was using caution when mentioning any details surrounding the incident with her mother. She also chose not to name the producer. While some may think she advances could have been made by Brian Peck, who was accused... I, I don't know about that, because Brian Peck was... It's about boys for... He's a PDF file. What, what This article... Who's making this article? I don't know if that's the... Sounds like somebody else, right? Somebody else. Other All That actors have spoken out, accusing the network of racism. However, Angelique Bates says she never experienced or witnessed racism from any of the producers. I'm not sure where that is coming from because Nickelodeon created a lot of minority-based shows. Like, what is it? Gullah Gullah Island, Taina, Keenan and Cal, My Brother and Me, um, Romeo, Little Bill. Okay, the list goes on. She told us, top minority Creators, Maria Perez Brown. Okay, and late, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so got it, got it. So basically, this is that's a horrible story, though. It looks like, oh, does this mean I finally get a part of my apologies or nah? <laughs> Sarcasm for those that are having a hard time reading it. Yeah, where's all of our actual apologies, Dan Schneider? What a fucking, what a joke that was. That's horrible, though, that she's saying that this happened to her and what's weird about that was that story is very similar when it comes to production my experience was at nick on sunset with my mom my mom came with me there and you know uh but a very similar situation and you know we all know dan schneider did create a toxic work environment and so you know power to angelique i hope you know angelique if you ever want to reach out or anything i'm i'm here uh, that it, it's hard to speak out about these things because, again, most of the time, not many people believe you. And so, power to Angelique, power to survivors, and power, um, survivor! power, power to survivor! survivors. And I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.